everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. So, yeah. Before further ado, I bring to you former bass player for Twisted Sister. No, I'm just kidding. Marco oh, Mendoza. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> That's the best way to start, man. You got me cracked. Oh, my God. I'm doing good. Yeah. It's funny you should say that because um, it used to happen a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. In, in the 90s, I was touring with with Blue Murder with John Sykes, and, and people could swear that that was me, you know, that I was uh, Mark Mendoza from Twisted Sister. Uh, great cat, man. And uh, since then, we've met and we, we have a laugh about it. Uh, it started happening to him the other way around, too, but... So obviously, yeah, they got on the map in a big, in a big way, and um, they people hear the name Mark Mendoza. So we would, you know, get to these venues, man, and there'd be fans out there with Twisted Sister albums for me to sign, <laughs> and I was flattered, if, you know, just to get any kind of recognition at that point when you're at the beginning. It's great, but you start explaining yourself and say, guys, hey. That's another cat. Do a little bit of uh, research there. Uh, I'm another, I'm Marco Mendoza. That's Mark Mendoza. And this is my given, my birth name. And I believe he adopted that, just his show, his showbiz name. But um, so after a while, you give up because you go, oh, come on, Mark. Come on, man. D don't do this. I mean, we've been waiting for hours. We, we've been here since last night. You got to sign it. So you just go. And just, you know, let it go. But uh, it's so funny you should start with that because it's been a while. But that brings a lot of good memories, you know. I'm going to tell you, um, wasn't my camera panning to me. I'm going to do it to the view thing. I always do it. I do gallery. Okay. Well, I never usually do that one. So I, I, I hate this. Anyways, um, you can see me, obviously. So. I'm going to say, I think they had it wrong when they said the guitar players got all the girls. I think it's bass players. Let me tell you why. Wow. Let me tell you why. My biggest interview a few years ago was Travis Haley, you know, Lexi Fox. Mm -hmm. In the last two interviews, in the last three weeks, I've got over 50,000 views. I, was, I interviewed Rudy Sarzo. Mm -hmm. And then the next one was Jeff Pilsen a couple of days later, so about a week, uh, a week back. So I thought... I, I said to my uh, my agent, like, yeah, like I've got an agent, but I said, hey, get me Marco Mendoza on the show. So bass, bass players, players are huh? working for me, man. Awesome. Uh, you never know where it comes from. You know, whatever formula works, man, you never know. But uh, yeah, we've been getting <clears throat> a lot more attention here <clears throat> in the past, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 years. But um, um Especially now that I'm doing my solo thing, not to jump into that, but uh, now I'm in the forefront. You know, I'm I'm up there fronting my my own project and singing and writing and co-producing and uh, having a blast. You know, but uh, yeah, for a while you you're part of the lineup and you kind of get lost in the shuffle, which is fine. You know, I'm lucky. I'm just lucky and grateful to be in any kind of format in the sh in show business and in music business for for this long you know to be to be honest and then uh you know rudy and jeff uh, some of the busiest cats out there and the bass department and uh i i respect them dearly so it's good to be in that group thanks for asking man Absolutely. it's good to be here yeah, oh, it's good. it was interesting. I tried to get you on the show before, and you're in. Um, you were you were telling me earlier you're in Saudi Arabia. Um, you're also in. Was it Abu Dhabi or or uh, Dubai? Uh, uh, this was Qatar, Doha, oh. Qatar. Yeah. Okay, I think of this. I think of places like that. Like only the super rich are going, and I'm thinking, what was it like to be in Qatar? Um. Uh, it's very affluent. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of commerce. A lot of uh, affluence, you know, in every every possible way. And I, I'm lucky enough that I get calls from from uh, producers, artists, and uh, they want me to be to collaborate, you know, to participate. Uh, 
So it's been happening more and more and more and more, which is great. Trust me, I'm grateful to be working. But the travel, the long travel oh, beats beats me up, man. I, that was a 16-hour flight. And I'm getting ready to take off back to Europe here in a few weeks. So uh, out of the whole process, that's – but I'm not going to complain because it comes with the gig. You know, we, we have the saying – um, amongst all of us is that we get paid for the travel, the logisticals, the logistics mm -hmm. of it all. And when we get on stage, that's the fun part when we get to play music, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I've been to Abu Dhabi. I've been to Dubai, uh, uh, Sri Lanka, South Africa, all that. But I got to say, it's mind-blowing the amount of... Um, um, it's like Disneyland. Think about an adult Disneyland. Everything yeah. to to an extreme. You know, the, the the tallest buildings on the planet, the 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 baddest rides on the planet, the the uh, the biggest companies, uh, uh, the you know the most elegant restaurants on the planet. So on and on and on and on. So you you kind of take it all in and you go, wow, what's great. I, it's good to be part of this and enjoying this and uh but it's not me you know it's uh um i i can i i can almost say and i don't want to sound judgmental but i can almost say you can see how superficial it is it's all material it's all throw more money it's like vegas times 10 if that explains it las yeah, vegas is, times 10. is it dubai or um, abu dhabi that have that um Famous Dubai. hotel that's got the, it's the um, the building is shaped like uh, sails. Yeah, that's Dubai. Yeah, wow. uh, it's amazing. I mean, to experience and to be there, it's amazing. To I'm not going to uh, deny that, but uh, it's also a little, you know, for me, man. I grew up in a little town, Tijuana, Mexico. You know, uh, you go to a place like that, and it's you have to kind of adjust your perception and go. On the other hand, the business is great. So, you know, uh, it's it's like that, you know. Um, that's one of the things that that I love about my job. I get to travel the world and I've been traveling for a long, for 85 years or so now. No, I don't think you've been traveling for 85 <laughs> years. In, in, unless your mother was pregnant for 30 of them. <laughs> so you were born in Tijuana, you said? Uh, no, I was born in San Diego. I'm a, I'm a California guy. Oh, okay. I thought you, I read that you came from Mexico, but you have Mexican I, heritage. Yes. Spanish, Mexican, um, uh, even uh, American Indian, uh, a bunch of stuff. But um, in those days, there people would work. My father's a U.S. citizen and both my mom and my father, they have dual citizenship. And the reason for that, if you go back in history, is that California used to belong to Mexico. Right. And so two, three, four generations after, you know, you be in that area, the border towns, we grow up uh, speaking two languages, English and Spanish. And then we even have our own little slang, which we call Spanglish, you know, mm -hmm. our own little uh, uh, words here and there. But um, so I was born in San Diego and left the hospital and we went down to Tijuana across the border where I live. And I was there for the first 14, 14, 15 years of my life. And then I came to San Diego to Chula Vista, Chula Vista High School. And yeah. uh, I did one year of that and it just didn't work for me. Uh, the music bug was in me already. And uh, I got an opportunity to start traveling. I got, got, a, got into touring and shortly after got married. I mean, my life went boom, 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 really fast. All of a sudden, I was 18, I, I was married, I had a music career, and two kids, and everything comes with that, you know? So, uh, pretty interesting, man. I, I think back, and it's no wonder that I fell into every, every hole that you could fall into in that environment as to, you know, drinking and drugging and everything that you do, because there's no manual, man. Nobody, nothing prepares you for the road. When you're that young, 16, 15 years old, you're on the road, you're playing on big stages in front of big audiences and all the party favors that come with it and the lifestyle, you know, 
so yeah being weak and uh, uh you just indulge and before you know it you got a big alcohol and drug problem and uh you know 87 i i had the opportunity to kind of look at my life and make a choice of where i wanted to go and i got sober september 20th of 87 so 36 years of sobriety now that's that's awesome uh, man Don't want to it is. Up, but i'm it is. an alcoholic myself and yeah um, yeah yeah you know i continue to uh try to maintain sobriety longer and longer and it's a lifelong mm -hmm. journey it's not easy i it mean is. i've talked to a lot of people especially in your industry where it's more predominant because of the travel you're away from the family you've got all the temptation right yes so um congrats thank you man yeah yeah my life changing there's no doubt in my mind Ernest. uh today i wouldn't be here period had i not gotten sober things had gotten so bad and so extreme that uh, it would have been a matter of of months if not weeks or days because it was really bad and i call it divine intervention i'm a christian i believe in god and i believe he he came in he intervened in my life because i couldn't do it for myself mm -hmm. and then i got exposed to the 12-step program and uh for the first time in my life i took direction i got out of myself and i took direction i realized listen i can't do it I, i've tried it Every possible um, answer, every possible cure, e you know, everything you can imagine uh, under the sun, I tried and I just couldn't. I didn't understand that it was an inside job, that it was me who was the problem deep down inside, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, I was bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And self-esteem was almost non-existent. And here I am, I mean, I'm getting calls to do some heavy work mm -hmm. some high profile stuff and to this day i realized that i didn't get those gigs i mean i would audition for people like lionel richie this is in the 80s think about it when he was he's still massive but then it was like he had hits after hits after hits i you know auditioning for cats like him uh auditioning for people like Cher. i was in the scene and uh I wasn't ready. I didn't get. Well, you worked with for... you worked with Cher. Um, I didn't. No, I auditioned. K Katie Cher. Oh yeah. How is she? You know her. Uh yeah, I interviewed her uh, last year. Yeah, she had talked about you in the interview. Uh, very yeah informative. yeah yeah. She's she's great. What a great singer. She's she's come a long way, man. She's she's taking it serious and uh, she's got some chops. We did actually, we did a show last year. We got in touch with each other in a little festival and and her and her boyfriend were uh, were features in my show, in my set. And mm -hmm. it was cool, man. It was cool. Uh, she's good people and, and she's in it for the right reasons. She loves music. She loves to sing and she does everything possible to keep growing. I wish I had a little bit of that. Uh, I'm going in a different direction, you know, but... Uh, yeah, I know, I know Cher, Katy, Kat Katy Cher. <laughs> but yeah, so back to finish yeah. the, the point, the, the reason why I say um, it was a divine intervention because had I gotten, no doubt in my mind, had I gotten any of those breaks, had I gotten any of those gigs, the level of stress, the level of, uh, possible indulgence was there because now you're talking a hundred times fold and uh, I wouldn't have been able to, to deal with it. And so in retrospect, you go back and you go, it's the reason why everything happens the way it does. Right. Mm -hmm. I had to get sober 87 and get my life in order and, and uh, realize that music was a gift. It's a privilege. I still feel that way. And I'm surprised that I'm still around after so many years. I get these calls that are pretty cool. Uh, but now I show up, Ernest. The difference is I show up on time, or I try to. Uh, and I prepare myself. I study whatever project I'm getting into. I take it very serious, seriously. And I respect my business. I try to take care of my body so my body can take care of me to look and sound and perform as, as good as possible. And then the rest takes care of itself. 
you you do a job, you do a good job, and then you you know your name gets thrown, uh, people notice, and word of mouth, and more so in this business now these days, it's word of mouth. Is people know who you are, where you've been, what you've done, and they call you. So, so yeah, man, thirty six years of sobriety paying off. Thank God. When you're on the road, do you uh, do you hit any meetings sometimes, or do you do anything do Zoom? I I try to. Uh, I, I have to say, in all honesty, I the last meeting that I did, I was here in town. Uh, it gets a little more difficult logistically when you start moving every day, right? Yeah. And, and your hours available for you, for your personal, uh, mm. shrink. You have very few hours, a yeah. little time available. And most of the time, uh, for me, it's just resting because I'm singing a lot. So I try not to talk. That's a mm -hmm. big one. Uh, and kind of isolate, shut your brain down. Uh, if you can get a couple hours here and a couple hours there. But I do talk. I wave the flag real high, man. The sobriety <laughs> flag. And I think I have a bit of a reputation out there. People call me. Mm -hmm. And we do talk. And I try to point the direction. And it's very important, in my opinion, that people... Uh, if they're serious about sobriety, that they follow the steps to get involved in the 12-step program anyway, um, that they follow the steps, they work the steps, that they find a sponsor in their own area so they can talk to 24-7 if needed, you know. And me being in all these different time zones, it just doesn't, doesn't work. But um, I have a lot of friends in the business oh, yeah. that, I'm talking, that I'm talking to now. I have had some in the past and unfortunately i've had some friends that didn't make it you know and yeah. i won't name any names it doesn't matter it's all about the disease man you can have all this success in the world you can have all the material uh stuff that you that you ever wanted uh all the money uh you know everything that comes with a with a with a an, a, an abundant lifestyle and inside you're broken you know, your selfless lack of self-esteem keeps telling you, you don't deserve this. You don't deserve this. So what do you do? You drink, you use, you sabotage yourself. That was a pattern with me. And, and now I'm like, you know what? Yes, I deserve everything that's coming. I've been working really hard. I haven't had a, anything that's mind altering in a long time. And essentially, I'm a good guy. You know, I... I try to, to live uh, a good life and be a, uh, a, as, as good as a human being you can be. And in our business, it's kind of important, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a trip. Yeah, I mean, I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. Ernest, I have a lot of stuff I need to work on, like all of us. Yeah. But, um, but I'm aware that's the difference. My eyes are wide open. I don't, I'm not running from anything. I can't. You know, I'm sober. So when there's a few things that I need to work on and I let it go, it always comes back and bites me in the ass. So then mm -hmm. I wake up, I say, okay, I got to work on this and, and change that and, and try to improve that and so on and so forth. But you're right. It's a journey, man. It's not an event. You know, sobriety is constant journey, changing challenges uh, and everything that comes with, uh, with trying to stay sober, you know? But uh, yeah, man, um, there's a lot of a lot of folks out there that that, that are going through a lot of pain. Yeah. And, so and for anybody that's watching this interview, usually the video will pan to me when I'm talking. It's not doing that. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. I just want uh, the viewers to know that are my regular subscribers that um, I'm working on it. I don't know. So I'm going to put this up just so it, um, I'm going to ask you a question directly now. Sure. Um, sure. How is it? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to go with this. The Dead Daisies. That was a great, great run when you were in the band. Um, yes. And it was, I understand, and I talked to Johnny about it, too. It was just exhausting, the uh, touring and the scheduling and stuff. Um, yes. Is there a chance that in the future, if you're in, say, Australia doing some shows, you might jump on stage? Do you still have a good relationship with Dave and everybody? I do. We're we're a family, you know, and uh, I talk to the guys periodically here and there. We touch base. We we knew each other before the day that day season, and we'll know each other after the that day season. Uh, and some of the cats there I've worked with in other projects. Doug Aldrich, you know, White Snake. I was there for 
for a while with him. Um, um, Brian Tishy as well. You know, he was he went through the White Snake camp, so White Snake alumni. Uh, uh, the first lineup, which was Richard Fortes and Dissy Reed from from GNR. Um, Richard and I worked together with Thin Lizzy. Uh, so there's a lot of connections, you know. Um, uh, we stay in touch. Last year, uh, they happened to be playing in Wales, I believe. I want to think. And I was doing a gig there the next day. It was a travel day for me. I got to town and it was a, 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 an off night for me. I was playing the next night and I heard they were in town. I called them, you come over. So we went over and hung out. Uh, did not ask me to sit in, which is fine. Um, I, I went to say hello, you know. I Believe this or not, man, I really dig it being on the other side because I know all the, all the ins and outs. I know all the moving parts in that camp, like a lot of camps, you know, the, the people, the, the logistics, the, all that stuff that goes on backstage. It's nice to be on the other side and appreciate what it is what the picture is, you know, what the canvas is showing. Uh, so for me, I dig it. And every so often people are really adamant about me sitting in and, and playing and getting up on stage. And then, you know, when I feel that energy, I say, yeah, let's go, come on, let's have fun. But it's cool to be on the other side. Most recently with Glenn, I went, I was in the same town with Glenn Hughes. I'm a big fan. Uh, he's unbelievable, man. And he's a good friend. And uh, Soren, a guitar player, was used to be my guitar player. I kind of hooked them up together. Um, and he said, Marco, you got to come. And I said, bro, no, I just came in. And we talked about the daisies. We talked about sobriety. We talked about human beings, human beings, bass player, a little bit of shop. But I was just there to enjoy him and his band. They sound amazing. He sounds better than ever, which, which is almost impossible to do, but he does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I have all the respect and the love for that cat, man. He, he really represents, um, some, you know, the high level of talent and he's a professional cat and he's got so much to offer. So he inspires me every time I go see him and talk to him and all that. He inspires me to, to kind of strive for stuff like that, you know, but, uh, he said, you got to come up. Boom. And I got up there and it was a blast. I enjoyed it so much. And uh, and then I happened to be a month later in the, a different city because I was touring at the same time. And he did it again. I said, OK. And that was a blast. But with the Daisies, no, I haven't been. I haven't been invited. I've been to the shows twice, I think, where I was um, <clears throat> up front, you know. And it sounded great, man. I know the whole team. I know Tommy. I know the crew. I know Lee all the texts and, and everything behind the scenes. So it's like a family, man. You never leave the yeah. family, right? You share a lot of time. I was there for five years, yeah. five and a half years. It's a long time. So um, I want to say, yeah. So, um, and we did a lot of great, great work. There's some, some great albums. I'm very proud of that. The catalog is vast. Um, and uh, so, yeah, what happened um, is like, you said John shared this with you. We we got a little uh, over ambitious, maybe you want to say, which is fine these days. You don't know; nobody's got the formula, so you do whatever's in front of you. And we were we were pushing uh, the extremes. We were we were doing a lot of work, like a bit much, and it was Almost exhausting. To the point where if you kept it up, you'd be pushing daisies. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and, and John was the first one to say, listen, I need a break, man. This has got to stop. And and he was, I think we all agreed. We just went along with the team. You know, we mm -hmm. just headed by the manager. And he's like, okay, we got to do this. We got to get from point A to B. And we got to work very hard. And and I still believe these days, that's what you got to do. To stay on the map, to get on the map first. And then to stay on the map, it's social media is a big part of what we do now. So we were, oh man, we were shooting content all day. We had a camera in front of us and behind the show and after the show. And then we do acoustic sets and we do 
a lot of talk shows early in the morning and it was a lot of work, man. And, uh, you know, being the fact that we're not 20 something or 30 something anymore, yeah, you feel it physically. Yeah. And uh, so I think the idea, I think the, I think the, the solution would have been to take a break when I think back, take a break. Six months, three months, four months, I don't know, just stop, everybody go home, breathe, enjoy the fruits of your labor, yeah. go home, be with your families, uh, just shut it down and, and recharge the battery, you know, which I do from time to time, I gotta do it. And, uh, but um, I think it got the best of, of John and he just bailed, he says, I gotta stop. And management was not ready to stop, you know. Uh, and so that's what happened. And then the rest is history. But uh, uh, yeah, I missed it right away, man, because I, I, you know, became a big part of my family. You know, I have a lot of a lot of friendships there, a lot going on. And uh, but at the same time, funny enough, 19, when John decided to take a break, uh, we were looking for a new singer. My solo stuff, Viva La Rock, had been out for a year. And all of a sudden, I start getting invitations. Can you come play here? Can you come play there? Bum, bum, bum. So I ended up doing, I don't know, 80 to 100 shows that year in 19, 2019. Wow. So I was really busy. It wasn't like I was sitting home waiting for things to happen. I was really busy traveling all over the place. And uh, I did the U.S. I did... Um, all over Europe. Um, I went even into Russia before all that crap started happening. I went to Japan. I mean, I was bopping all over the place and I was having a good time. Yeah. And uh, to my surprise, to be honest, I didn't ex uh, you know, expect that kind of response. The more gigs I did, the more I got invited. And, uh, and then 20, I had, I don't know, some of the biggest festivals lined up. Yeah. So, I could see the growth and I could see, okay, this is paying off. I love singing my band, I sing in my music. I love fronting my band. It's a lot of work, but here we go. And then 20 happened and, you know, it shut everything down. And right now we're kind of like picking up the pieces and trying to get moving again. It's starting to look better, better, yeah. but, but it's changed. You know, the, oh, yeah. the environment has changed a lot. Yeah, so. Yeah, everybody's yeah. Uh, recording. Their pieces from their home studio, sending it to the next guy, and it's yeah. it's uh, some pe some guys I'll talk to or, or women will say it works for them, and then some say yeah, it's not the same vibe as it being in a sweaty room with all the other guys. Yeah. You'll find, and maybe I'm wrong, but you'll find that the younger cats, uh, yeah, are okay with it. Yeah, the older cats have been around for a few years, like me, man. We used to get into a room at not much bigger than, I mean, a little room and record and, and learn the songs, learn the songs, practice, work everything out, all the kinks out, and then you record, boom. Uh, and for me, that's where you capture the humanity, that the players, the spirit of four or five cats in the same room connecting, you know, uh, it, it's almost magical, man, it's, it is. I'm not saying it's perfect music. It's not. Sometimes not by a long shot, but the vibe is yeah. huge, you, you know? And then we used to record analog, which in my opinion, is the best sounding uh, uh, recording method for drums and bass. Being a bass player, I appreciate it. And I hear the difference. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, that's kind of moving on, you know? But uh more and more, I'm asked to participate uh, yeah. in recordings where the, the players are in the same room mm -hmm. and we get sent the music yeah. and we write, we write our own parts and we all get into the studio and with headphones and we play live, you know, record. Yeah. And then the editing becomes a big part of the whole thing and that's cool. You know, it's a nice tool to have, but you capture that thing. And with the Daisies, we were doing that actually. Uh, and my stuff, we do that. We actually get in the room and uh, and play, you know, make your write the songs, arrange, excuse me, arrange them, and then 
bring the drummer in and go, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's important, man. You can hear it. I can. Yeah. I can almost tell the difference when people were in different countries, you know, sending their parts in and, and then it's up to the producer to mix everything right and master everything, yeah. everything right and so that it's cohesive, you know. Well, and sometimes you can get great results. I mean, yeah. You know. I mean, back in the day when we're reading Circus Magazine and Hit Parader, you, you can't read about um, two guys getting in a scrap in the studio if they don't have a studio that they can be in. So, I mean, yeah. not to say I'm uh, glamorizing violence. I'm just saying you've got the energy, you've got the personalities, and then sometimes you make better music out of um, just the tension. Yes, absolutely. I've experienced that many, many, many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So New Direction is your 2022 um, release. Are you working on yeah. any newer music now? I know I know you're busy as hell. Uh, always. There's a track that we're going to release. We're trying to figure out what to do with it. As you can imagine, um, the landscape has changed completely. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's almost, I don't want to say it's redundant, but it's almost not necessary to release full albums anymore, I don't think. Unless you're somebody that's up and coming and you want to get on the radar and get on the map yeah. and you want to establish yourself as you know a, a certain style of music and this and that. And even then, um, for financial reasons, it's not paying off. And that's what's going on right now. So production costs have gone to, you got to go in there and work fast, yeah. which I'm a big fan of, to be honest, because it's sincere. It's you, you capture the moment, you know, you, it's, you document what you and your players are feeling that particular minute that when you record that hour and then, then you edit and you can make changes, but it's honest. I, the last two albums have been done like that with my guy with Soren Anderson, who's now working with, with Glenn, Glenn Hughes. He's yeah. my producer and guitar player. He was my first guitar player with my solo project. And he's a great songwriter himself. He's a great singer, amazing guitar player, producer, engineer. He mixes, he masters, he does the whole thing. He's got a studio in Copenhagen, Medley Studios. And um, so him and I have something really cohesive, really special in that um, we get together from the moment we get together, we put four or five hours log, you know, two, three days and we get albums done, man. It's a trip. That's really a trip. He does a lot of the work, obviously, uh, but um, we work really well and it's fast and it's sincere, like I said earlier. And so that's what you have in, in Viva La Rock and uh, New Direction. Um, uh, so, you know, but right now we're talking, we're trying to get together. I'm going to be touring and I'm going to, I'm going to be in the vicinity. We're trying to get a day or two to get together. And I've, I'm always writing ideas and he's always yeah. working. He's, he's got this creative mind and so do I sometimes. And when we get together, it's cool. Uh, but yeah, there's one song that we're trying to pay attention that I did with a, a, a friend of mine in Holland. And um, I heard the track, I saw the video, and we're trying to, we're trying to, uh, uh, to release it at the right time, you know, uh, so that it gets the most uh, hits, uh, most yeah. notice as possible. Uh, and we're going to play the song live at a festival in Holland. And so that's the next project right now. I now in um, where I was, we just been writing and singing and writing and singing. And we're trying to put that project together as well. And it will be announced here shortly, maybe by the end of the year, maybe before, before that in the fall. So yeah, there's always something cooking, man. Always. So you can't, so you, you right now you're reluctant to name the, that song. Uh, uh, well, I'm trying to keep it so that when it comes out, it goes boom, you know, all right, it's it's you. really it's really it's really uh, uh, relatable to what we're going through as a planet, you know. Oh, and, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think people will hear it. And uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. No, that's the, okay. The, 
the title just gives you the whole story, you know. It yeah. talks about yeah. talks about a, a about a land that we all dream of, you know, a land of wine and roses and uh you know and a peaceful land where everybody gets along and yeah we haven't and, seen that for a while well you know we're all preaching it and we're all talking about it but we yeah. haven't seen it yeah. and i think i think uh in the back of our minds we all wish we could be there you know so oh, yeah. yeah it's really relatable to uh, uh the way of thinking right now for everybody and uh so we're hoping, and the video's cool. Uh, there's nothing glamorous about it. What you hear is what we played. Yeah. The lyrics are very simple and direct. Um, you know, I'm when I write lyrics, I'm just very to the point. You know, I, I'm not a. I didn't finish high school, <laughs> so my lyrics are really available. They're really easy to hear and and to yeah. hear the message. You know, but I do try to make a difference when it comes to doing music and being creative, either to send a, a message of hope and yeah. optimism and bring some light to what's going on in the planet today. You know, I think that's yeah. important to me and it's, and it's honest, it's sincere. So, yeah. so like that, man, that's what's going on, but always something cooking, Ernest. Sir. And all I want to say is please stay in touch, you know, to your listeners, please stay in touch at uh, MarcoMendoza.com. Yeah, and there's always I'm always updating and and letting people know what's going on. I'm trying to sit back on the social media situation. I have people that help uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. For me, it's time consuming. Yeah, it takes it takes up a lot of time that I don't have right now. Are you um, talking about Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and that? Yeah, all of it. Generally, speaking. I, I took myself right off of it about a month ago. Yeah, yeah, I and I see a lot of my friends. Yeah. It was having um, the opposite effect of um, you get that endorphin rush for getting some, you know, bunch of comments on a post you put up. And then if you put something up, you don't get the same rush. It's it's not devastating, but it's to me, it was wasting time. Yeah. Just me. And the reality is, in my opinion, is, yes, we need friends. Yes, we need fans in our industry supported by the fans. But. I, you know, we don't know each other. We really don't know each other. I appreciate the support and the love. Yeah. Uh, that will never change. But uh, I find it tough to to connect at a at a deeper level. So I think it's very superficial, which is fine. It's cool. It's a new medium, and we got to be there. And I appreciate it. But I go in, and before you know it, it captures my imagination, my attention, and I'm in there for two, three hours without yeah. realizing. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I should have been doing this and doing that, especially when I'm home. You know, yeah. I got family here, my wife, my kids. I got a life here. Yeah. And I've been gone for months. I come home. It just doesn't feel right to be yeah. to be there. You know, now this is different. This is work related. This is yeah. trying to get the word out about my music, you know, and uh, and talk to the fans. And, and this is great. By the way. You guys, the way I look at it, you guys, the journalists, are at every level. You are the glue, man. You connect us to the fans in a in a deeper way. I really believe watching interviews, you get to know the, the person a little deeper, and you understand who they are, how they how they work, yeah. and that's interesting to me. So I appreciate that uh, a lot, and and we kind of need each other, you know. Well, when I found, um, I decided to to do YouTube. I've been writing for years, um, interviewing, you know, the old style phoners and uh -huh. it's hard for the reader to capture the context of a, um, uh, a, a talent's answer, but just reading yeah. black and white. So I think this uh, medium is, is a great medium. Yes, absolutely. And it's honest again, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I, gonna... I really enjoy watching people's faces face to face. I really dig it. Yeah. Human being to human being, connecting at that level, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put links below just so you know, Marco, so people can go to your uh, website, check out your links and your merch. You have a nice website, by the way. And Thank you. Um, I like the fact that uh, on your website you have interviews posted there, so whoever yeah. does your webmastering stuff, it would be nice if mine gets thrown up. But Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they all do. They. Um, uh, I have a great team. That's Jim. 
Jim Gregory, my buddy. He's been part of my team since 1935. 35, he, eh? yeah, sure. Before the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have oh. some comedy relief here, you said. <laughs> yeah. And before I forget, I want to thank Fernan Fernando Reyes for setting this up. He was great. Yes. Mighty Music, um, yes. So you got about 50 shows coming up, and you're doing some shows with uh, – Somebody I'm very fond of, and I've interviewed a uh, few times, AJ, Adrian. Ah. Uh -huh. Vandenberg. Yeah, yeah. So yes. you must have worked with him before. Uh, well, we, we go up. back. We we, yeah. we, uh, we have, uh, you know, we're part of the Whitesnake um, alumni. Mm -hmm. Of course, he was there um, for a long period, and he was part of the writing. He was part of the, uh, when Whitesnake was huge, and he, and, and, he had a great time with DC and I came in later, much later, but um, he's a great guy, man. The moment I met him, we, we were shooting videos for David and we just got along great. He's just one of those guys that he, he appreciates who he is and, and where he got, you know, where he's at, he's uh, but he, he's very, very, very humble. And I, I learn from people like that and I try to follow those steps because I believe uh, that's the way it should be, you know. Then give me a second. It looks like my battery is low and I'm going to okay. plug in the power. Can we pause or yeah. do you want to just can I'll you let, do that? Uh, yeah, pause I can for, I can edit this out after. No worries. 2 minutes, call me yeah. back. Yeah. Oh, um I'll just I'll just click um I'll click uh, pause, pause right here. I put I I and we're back. I, yes, we are. <laughs> So speaking of Uncle Ted, uh, how was it working with uh, the Nuge? Oh, we were talking about Adrian. I'm sorry, not to. Oh yeah, to yeah. Finish. No, he's great, man. We we uh, we 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 hooked up again uh, through his manager, who is starting to work with me. We're starting to work with each other a little bit, and he thought that it would be a great combination, being that we both come from the White Snake thing, and uh, and we did six shows last year, mm -hmm. and. Uh, sold out shows great venues and so they proposed before the the tour ended i guess adrian was let's just keep going and so we booked 10 shows this year in april yeah, starting just... april april 4th so he's a good guy man he's the whole team there his band uh members are amazing matt's what a great singer of the bass yeah. all the cats are amazing and the crew management the whole thing it's really fun to hang out with them and uh and they sound amazing and you know adrian's playing amazing so I, it's it's great i think he's still in this i think he's still in the states right now he's uh ending up ending the tour with uh, jeff date yes exactly yeah yeah they're uh they're fit yeah i think this week they finish i haven't looked but uh but then we reconvene in holland uh, april 4th Wow. So uh, it's all good, man. He he's a he's a great guy. I saw him at Nam show briefly. He was really busy, so was I. We were running opposite ways, but uh so we're hoping to maybe uh do some things in the future. We'll see what what's what's cooking and what works schedule wise. But uh yeah, I'm looking forward to it. My guys are also looking forward to it. It was a great run and we're doing ten ten more. And then we're doing a bunch of dates uh, all over the place, Europe. But back to Ted. I'm sorry, we're a little bit all it's over okay. the place. It's okay. Uh, 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 Ted, I got to say, he's been one of the highlights of my career uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, we know Ted Nugent is Ted Nugent, right? I, I don't know a lot of cats that were not inspired or influenced by him, one way or another. He's just yeah. he's he's that cat, you know. So when when I got the call, Tommy Aldrich, who's a dear friend, we ended up working together a lot. And he called me, he says, Marco, um, Ted, my he's considering to check out other bass players that can sing. Mm -hmm. Would you be would you be interested? I said, Yes. So within half an hour, I get the call and Ted's Ted, man, mind blowing, you know, he's got all the energy in the world. He says, Yeah, 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 we're doing this uh this kiss. Uh, run and uh, I want to keep the band I want to keep it as a trio so it'd be nice to have a bass player that can sing right uh, can you come and join us me and Tommy and I said of course so came to LA 
I went in there, I did my homework, I learned some songs, some of the classics. I'm also a huge fan of Garrett St. Holmes. I think he's one of the baddest yeah. singers ever. Yeah. Uh, so for me, you can imagine, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. I did my best yeah. uh, and nobody's going to sing like, like Derek. Nobody. No. He's just one of those cats. But I did the best I could with what I had and I showed up and, and sang a little bit and played a little bit and uh, we had a great time. Just, I'm I'm craving some Mex some some Mexican food, man. Do you know anything around here? I said, absolutely. Three blocks away from me. Yeah. So I took him. We went and had dinner or lunch. Came back, played a little more, and I could see in his face that he was checking me out, really checking me out, listening. And he did uh, request, you know, can you can you uh, can you pick a pick? Can you play with a pick? I said, yes, of course. I usually go to the finger and he okay. really was really clear about the pick. And I understand that having played with Thin Lizzy, which is another story. But um, so I did it and he was like, oh, cool. All right, great. So he saw that I was a team player. He saw that I was there to support him and his thing in any possible way. And, you know, I get the call the next day. you got the gig. We're going out on, on this KISS tour. Uh, with with the farewell tour at 2000, 99, 2000, 2001, with all the original yeah. members, with Ace and uh, and Peter. Uh, so we had a blast, man. And he treated me with all. He was so courteous to me. He was sensitive. Are you cool, man? Everything all right? Everybody's treating you okay? With a lot of respect which is kind of unheard of in our business. You know, people, we just take each other for granted. Yeah, he, was yeah. very much, he was very much aware of his people that were on his team, on stage and off stage, the crew and all that. And I really appreciated that. I think he's, as a human being, he's like up there, man, for me. So he inspires me in that way. And of course, as a musician and the classic uh, rock and roll that he's written and... Uh, He's one of those cats that needs to be uh, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's just me saying a little something, but we can move on from that. There's reasons for that, right? But so as as a musician, man, as a, a guitar player, um, as as a father, as a human being, as a husband, uh, he he just he just blew my mind. I just he's another one of those cats that inspires you to be better. Because when you're around him, and I was around him for a long time, you know. And then we have the hunting thing that, that we kind of clicked uh, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. And I am aware that people don't dig that. But, you know, I grew up in that environment without having any choice. My father was like that. Uh, but um, so, yeah, it was great, man. And uh, one thing about Ted, man, and I, and I respect him for that as he is Ted Nugent, man, and he lets you know right away how he feels about everything. And yeah, there's no guessing with him. And and I, as much as I hate to admit it, man, I I fall under that category of people. We're diluted. We don't want to rock the boat. We yeah. we hold back. We keep it all inside. We want to make friends. We want everybody to, you know. And I think he got to the point. We had this conversation. That's his job. He needs to bring awareness you know and sometimes it's mind-blowing yeah. and the message the message can you know the delivery can can uh turn you off but i tell everybody if you really listen to the message man listen yeah. to the message there's a lot of he makes a lot of sense man in so many ways so he's got all the respect for me and we say hello we we text each other as often as we can and uh i'm a big supporter of Ted Nugent, man, forever. He's, so you're, so you're he's the cat. The guy that wrote Cat Scratch Fever is the real Cat's Meow? Yes. <laughs> he is, man. And Stranglehold yeah, okay. and Hey Baby and what the doctor ordered and yeah, yeah. Uh, Steak Skins Steak Wango Skin Tango. Cowboy and Wango Tank. Wango Tango. Come on. Bam, bam, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> and I live in I live in Southern California here, right? Yeah. In my area, they love him, man. There's I don't I can't come across anybody that that 
that doesn't support Ted, you know, and love his music and and what he stands for. So, yeah, man, my whole family, we dig him. And he treated us amazing. Uh, you know, I met all the kids and Shemaine, his wife. We spent a lot of time together. So uh, definitely a highlight in my career. Definitely a highlight. And if, he, if he, he ever gets out, if he ever goes out again and needs me to come play, I would change my plans. I'm being honest to do it. I really would because he's one of those cats, man. Definitely. So you're saying he should come on my show as well, right? Absolutely. And he'll <laughs> blow your mind, man. I've he been trying so... to get him on the show for a while, but I'm, I'm keep going to keep trying. He actually, speaking of hunting, we uh -huh. live on the border. He used to come up to Canada and hunt just about maybe about uh, two hours north of where I live. Yeah. With the crossbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him. And he's he's a master. He's so uh, yeah. He's in, really impressive with that thing, man. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, before I let you go, so everybody. Oh yeah, you you just uh, you were tell everybody the work you've done with Neil Sean recently. Oh, um, well, you know Neil and I have been friends for a long time. We we did a project a few years back called. Uh, um, I just went blank. Wow. Travel. That's what travel does. Uh, <laughs> um, with Jeff Scott Soto and Dean Casanova and 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 Neil and Soul Circus, it was called. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I met him at NAM. I met him at uh, Music Messe in Germany, which is the equivalent of NAM show in Europe, in Germany, oh, Frankfurt. Okay. Years ago, he. I was working with Fernandez. I was uh, working with them, developing a six-string fretless bass, and he was there with a sustainer. And I was playing a lot of jazz back then, uh, a lot of fusion, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, so we hooked up, uh, we said hello, and then he went his way, and uh, we reconvened at another trade show, the NAMM show in California. And his his bodyguard, Aaron Dilks, was a friend of mine. He had we had worked together in the past. Uh, uh, he, I, I remember walking through the, the Hilton and I remember hearing my name, Marco, Marco, Marco. And it was the Aaron that was, he was there with Neil. And I went over and said, I gave him a hug. And he says, this is Neil Sean. I know, man, we met. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. And he says, Neil's looking for a bass player and you are the cat. That's what Aaron said. You, you need to, you guys need to work together. Oh, wow. And, and Neil said, well, is there anything I can hear you in or any videos or music? You can? Well, I said, well, I'm going to be on stage here in 20 minutes with Sheila E and family and with my trio. And uh, yeah. so come in. So he came in, heard me. And as soon as I got off stage, we did an hour and 15. Um, he called me, he says, bro, I'm doing this project. I would love for you to be part of this. And so that was it. We hit it off again. Uh, you know, one of the greatest guitar players of our time, man. I'm very lucky that way, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so we hit it off. Next thing you know, I'm up there on the Thursday. We were working on some tracks. Friday, we track. We go to the studio, Jonathan Kane's studio, and record six songs, Dean and I, and rhythm tracks. And then two weeks go by, and we do the same. And then, boom, the album's done. So him and Jeff Scott finished the thing. And there you go, Soul Circus. So we went out and had a great time. We hit it off. We got even closer. And, and I dig the guy, man. He's he's very focused. He's a pro, you know, in every possible uh, way. And big heart, a great human, human being, man, and talent uh, like you wouldn't believe. So we hit it off. And then we always spoke about doing more stuff. That thing kind of fell off. Uh, something happened. I won't get into it, but it ended, and we were all hoping that it would go further. So, so then he called me a couple other times to do other projects, and so I was on his, you know, as bass players, he would call me. So, back in twenty twenty two, yeah, twenty two, I was in Copenhagen finishing off a new direction, my vocals uh, in the studio, and I got a text saying, "Marco, where are you, man? I need to talk to you." Can you get in touch? And so finish the recording on my way to the hotel. I was flying to LA the next morning. 
I got in touch. He said, Marco, we might need you. What's going on? Well, Randy, Randy Jackson was supposed to be in the lineup. Mm. We're not hearing back from him. We believe there's some medical issues going on or something. So we might need you. Are you in? I said, let me call you when I get home. And that was it. So I got to work with Journey, man. And it was uh, another highlight. Great experience. Uh, and and I was there filling in pretty much, you know, cover. I had prior commitments, other things cooking. And, uh, but you, you can imagine, man, you know, you're on the big stage with Journey playing all the hits. It was like, wow. Very yeah. trippy. Very sure. trippy. And, um, it's just one of those things that uh, it comes up and people saw me, you know, working with them and it keeps coming up. So I'm very proud of that. Thank you, Neil. And thank you, Jonathan. And thank you boys for that. Uh, and they're out there killing it. So, you know, I, I think we have one of those relationships where I might hear back from him or not for a while. And sometimes, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, so that's what it is, man. That was great, great experience. But now I am trying to pay attention to my solo stuff. Yeah. And be, and believe it or not, it's a grind. It's hard work, but I'm up for it and I'm ready for it. And I believe in what I'm doing. I love the music and I'm representing my music, my songs. And I love the message that I deliver. Right. Uh, and uh, doing some, some cool stuff. So check out New Direction, the new release, and Viva La Rock. The other two are Casa Mendoza on Mascot and uh, uh, Live for Tomorrow, Frontiers. So four albums. I thought four albums. To the Limit. Loved it. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I, we're, I, we're, I was we're, wondering what kind of video it was going to be because I kept seeing all the tattoos and then the girl lifted up her skirt and was showing all the, the leg tattoos. And yes. but, no, I love the song, man. It was great songwriting. Yeah, thanks, man. And that's a, one of those songs. I, I, I don't lie, man. We got in the studio um, to begin to work on that set, on New Direction. And within two hours, that song was done. The riff wow. was there, the lyrics. And and it came out of a conversation because Soren is touring all over the place. I'm touring all over the place. We're traveling the world. And then we reconvene in his studio in Copenhagen. And we look at each other going, are you tired? Yes, I'm fragment. Are you tired? Yes, I'm fragment. I said, why is it that we take everything to the limit? Because that's who we are. And that was it. It sparked a little, you know, thing in my brain. And I just started. And again, the lyrics are not deep. They're not. It's just, you know, enjoy life, man. And you live every minute to the max. Every, you know, every hour, every day, every month. Live your life to the fullest, and when you can, take it to the limit. You know, right. as musicians, that's what we do, bro. Constantly, we're always pushing the envelope. You know, but yeah. I dig that. We find some nice gems when we go beyond the parameters, and we go, "Oh, look at this! We wouldn't have found this if we hadn't pushed it to the limit, man." Look, yeah, it's it's like uh, it's a trip. Right so on. that's how we that's how fast we work. And Soren is uh, a master at uh, editing and, and arranging and writing. And we together, which is it's a great team. So we're trying to get together here soon, hopefully, and right get on. some more stuff going on. But uh, thanks for having me, bro. No problem. I just want to thank you for your time. I've got a question for you. Well, first yes. of all, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Oh, subscribe. All right, everybody do as this legend, Marco uh, Marco Mendoza from Twisted City. No, Marco uh, Mendoza <laughs> says and subscribe to the channel. And another question I got for you. That's favorite Mark Mendoza, by the way, Mark. That's, that's right. No, oh, no, oh. Favorite oh. Canadian band, and I need that in the form of a question. Oh. Who was a famous Canadian band of which I was part of? that recorded the first album under one name, had a, two big hits, and recorded the second album, and that's where I was part of. Famous Canadian band. You probably well, don't I know. know. You, I know you work with Rock Voisin, but... Yeah. But I'm not sure which band you worked with. Go back. How many famous bands? Well, there's so many, but um, yeah. they, they got on the map in a big way. And you know what? In my resume, people don't pay attention to it but that was a great experience again man 
And 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 Don Burton, a dear friend of mine, who was a tour manager and the manager at some point, uh, we stay we still stay in touch and we talk about those days. What you know, can't that? think of I'm not connected. Does sheriff, sheriff ring a bell? Sheriff? Yeah, Sheriff. Oh, wow. And they went yeah. on to be what? What They went on to be what? They changed well, the name. Well, yeah. But th was that they saying when I'm with you? Yes. Okay. Freddie. Freddie and yeah. Steve, the marquee. And then they went on to be Alias. Oh, that's right. Alias. That's when I came into the picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you got so, to play when I'm with you, with them when you did live we, shows. We never, we never did live shows. No, oh, okay. we came, Of course, the idea would, you know, I think that was back when grunge was coming in in a big way yeah. and it kind of, kind of beat everybody up. The labels were freaking out, and uh, you know, so if you weren't from that camp, from that side, that genre, you, you it was hard to book tours. I was yeah. out on tour with Blue Murder, John Sykes, right? Yeah, John Sykes. Great when player. when Nirvana came out and they started blowing up, and we went, oh, yeah. we went to the uh, you know the east side of the Mississippi, man, and we noticed right away, right away, the label which was Geffen as well, the same yeah. label, they started pulling everything back, and it was a trip. It was clear as night and day, man. It was like, whoa. So John. Uh, he's, you know, being a pro, he saw what was coming. He says, okay, we're pulling it. We're going home. And he pulled it. And we went home. And that was 93, 92, 93, 94, maybe. That's when Nirvana was still blowing up. And every, you know, Soundgarden and everything, Alice and everybody was coming. The whole right, thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, um, so yeah, there you go, Sheriff. Wow. Into alias, and that's a great album, man. Great, Freddie, what a voice, man. And Steve DeMarkey, great guitar player and songwriter. Those, those guys, man, are a beautiful team. And um, and then Steve, his his brother Danny, uh, was also part of that. He passed away recently, yeah. but that was my connection to Canadian yeah. rock. Yeah, and uh, and Don Burton, who ended up. Um, uh, get, getting married to Dolores O'Riordan from the Cranberries. Yeah, and you worked with her for a few songs I, as well. And I worked for her for a few albums, yeah. And we did tour with Dolores, actually. And yeah. Don was part of that, and we stay in touch. We talk to each other every so often. He's a big Nugent fan, huge. Like, great white buffalo, man. He's the cat. <laughs> Don. Hey, I want to thank you again, uh, Marco. Um, I'll uh, put links to your website and um some Please videos do. and um uh, take it to limit down below go to the yes. website get all the merch and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get these great interviews thanks again buddy all right brother we'll talk soon let's do an update ernest in a few months absolutely i'll get a hold when, of when i'm when i'm in europe actually which is trippy you know okay yeah. all um, right yeah maybe maybe uh sometime uh during the uh, run with Vandenberg, you can uh, pop in and let us know how it's going. Yeah, reach out. Remind me. And maybe you could do a live thing, too, from backstage. Yeah, love to. Let's do it. Get in touch yeah, with man. Fernando. All right? All right. Thanks, man. Okay. Thank you, brother. Bye. Talk soon. Peace. Peace.